Hello, I'm Henry Miori. Have you ever wondered if there's just a plain old common sense approach to planning and management? I believe there is. After a 25-year career in business and industry, I've noticed that there's some very simple principles that if we use those very simple principles, we're going to be successful as we manage, motivate, and work with our people. Stay with us. I'd like to go through each one of these common sense approaches to management with you. Common sense management. After a career of 25 years in business and industry, after having worked with a consultant in over 60 major organizations, I've found that there's some very key principles. If you keep those things in mind, you're going to have a highly motivated and on-target, well-focused workforce. I'd like to take you through each one of these, just one at a time. They're short to the point, but you're going to get a picture in your mind of how to manage from a common sense approach. The first and one of the most important is what I call care and feeding of the boss. With all these years of experience, I've noticed that there's a lot of strife, a lot of conflict, a lot of struggle out there in the organizations of America, whether it's in a church, a ministry, a railroad, an oil company, a nonprofit organization, or the gas station on a corner, that uh, the fact that you've got a boss-employee relationship by its very nature, creates conflict. Now, the care and feeding of the boss idea is one that's going to help you reduce conflict. Now, think about this. Uh, your boss is a very dominant person in your life. Whether you want to admit it or not, uh, you spend a lot of hours working for serving and trying to meet the expectation of this boss. Now, how do you care and feed a boss? Here's a Here's a a procedure that I've used for years. This has paid off in organization after organization. You say to your boss, develop a list of key specific responsibilities and measurable end results. What do you want me to accomplish this year? While your boss is doing that, you take a few days and write the same thing out on a sheet of paper. Then you have a meeting, whether it's over coffee, breakfast, or on a meeting in, in either one of your offices, you sit down and you compare those lists. What you then do is you actually agree on what's to be accomplished. If you just do this alone, you're going to solve most of your problems. What I see happening out in the workplace is that people just go to work and they don't really have a specific defined job. They don't know exactly what it is they're supposed to accomplish. People are assuming they know what they're supposed to do and go right ahead in the motion of getting things done. That isn't going to work. You've got to sit down and verbally discuss the measurable, specific things that have to be accomplished and any other kinds of things the boss wants, wants you to do. Then record that. Write it down in specific, measurable terms. Write out specifically what these key responsibility areas are. Care and feeding of the boss then you don't bother your boss as long as you're on target. You report back periodically and say, boss, I'm on target. You take that one sheet of paper and say, here's where I stand against each of those measurable objectives. Your boss is covering a lot of ground. He's got a lot of people working for him, and he doesn't have time, he or she doesn't have time to constantly be sitting down and reviewing what you're supposed to be doing. But you owe it to your boss to let them know if you're off target. I've used this care and feeding of the boss concept for years. <clears throat> I make sure that everybody that's working for me, that we go through the process of agreeing. We actually create a performance contract. And then, because I travel so much, I'm called to so many places, I say, now, as long as you're on target, uh, don't worry about asking me about, about de detailed day-to-day -day kinds of things. But the first time you see that you're a little bit off target or you might not reach an objective, you owe it to me to let me know immediately. 
employees, if you do that, that's the best care and feeding you can possibly give your boss. Now, a second concept that I cover in the book, uh, Common Sense Management, is let's turn that around, care and feeding of the employee. Every boss out there, you owe it to your employee to agree on what's expected. You owe it to them to coach them to come up with that agreement. So invite them to do the very same thing. Invite them to come back and say, what is it that you think you're trying to accomplish? Write it out on a sheet of paper. I'm going to write the same thing out on a sheet of paper, and let's compare our lists. Bosses, you owe it to your people to have a discussion with them and agree on what's to be done. Bosses, in terms of care and feeding of your employee, you owe it to them to give them a pat on the back every once in a while. Well, one thing we have to realize as leaders is that people are working to satisfy their higher level needs. I've got a 12-year research project going now across all areas of industry and church uh, and ministry kinds of work. We're surveying people in uh, coal mines, railroads, churches. And consistently, what we're seeing over this 12-year study is that people are working for recognition, recognition self-achievement, self-actualization. They want to be involved in their work. Now, if that's what you're working for, what does it cost you, boss, to give somebody a pat on the back, to write a memo to say, uh, uh, Joe, uh, really good job in front of a, your sales force to pick someone out and, and, uh, and recognize them for a particularly well job well done. If you do this, what you're going to find is you're going to have less turnover, more commitment, more loyalty, and people are going to feel good about working for you. Another principle that uh, is important is what I call the iceberg theory. And I've often thought about the great ocean liners, and specifically the Titanic, uh, about how an ocean liner can get in trouble. I can run into icebergs, how, how things can happen because nobody's paying any attention. What the iceberg theory says, it says get everybody involved in the strategic direction of, the, of, of your organization. Have everybody signaling back. Anybody's liable to be the one that sees land. Any person, perhaps the most insignificant person in your organization, it's going to be the one that spots the iceberg. You've got to have a system of listening and reporting back, both on opportunities and problems. That's what I call the, the iceberg theory. Uh, another very important principle here uh, is to get advice. I learned early in my career at Continental Can to get advice from other people. Almost made a mistake that uh, might have cost me my entire uh, job and my entire career because I hadn't listened to a, a key electrician give me some advice on a major project. But once I stopped and listened, I realized we were on, tr on the wrong track. We corrected it and, uh, and, and worked out a system that worked perfectly. But it only worked because I finally listened to advice. Now, what we can find places in the Bible that it says, listen, for advice. Uh, Proverbs 15, 22 says, without counsel, purposes are disappointed. Proverbs 19, 20 says, hear counsel and receive instruction. Proverbs 20, 18 says, every purpose is established by counsel. I see a major problem across our industrial America with not listening for advice, not, not answering uh, people when they send in ideas. You've got to have an iceberg theory that says everybody's out on deck watching. Create a listening environment in your organization, and that's what's going to keep you out of trouble. The promotion theory. The first day I worked for Continental Can, I'll never forget a seasoned veteran there in the company, and, and, and he said, uh, if you really want to get ahead in this organization, Right from the start, you've got to begin to develop your people, and you'll never get promoted if you don't develop someone to take your place. Now, what the promotion theory says is it says work with all your people. You don't know who your replacement might or might not be, but I'll guarantee you if you don't have a replacement ready, you'll never get promoted, and I saw this happen. I've seen this happen in my own career. Uh, a very well-qualified person couldn't move up 
because in the judgment of senior management, there's really nobody to go in and take the place of that key individual. Now, it's to your advantage to think about the promotion theory, but it's also to the advantage of your people. Once they see that you're interested in their development, they're going to work harder for you and make you more successful. Another common sense theory is, is you look at managing like parenting. I noticed as, as uh, my wife Mary and I have been parents and gone through the joy, excitement, frustration, and sometimes despair of raising three children, that uh, there's many correlations with the managing process. The encouragement and the key here is to seek training and counsel. I mean, anybody, almost anybody can have children. Almost anybody can just uh, get through the process the best you can, but there's so much good information available that we need to, uh, to learn how to parent and we need to learn how to manage. We've got to read books, listen to audio tapes. I am constantly, as I drive uh, around in my automobile, as I go through the process of my work, I'm listening to tapes by Peter Drucker, George Odeon, and others. As much study as I've done, I'm continually trying to learn more about the managing process. I see so many managers, and especially in nonprofit and Christian organizations, that don't take the time to, to learn about planning and managing. It's almost as if uh, they're just going to go through a whole lifetime of making all kinds of planning and organizational mistakes. Uh, an example as I see the matrix organizational structure being improperly used, and especially in hospitals and churches and nonprofit settings. If you're going to do something like that, at least read about and find out about all the pitfalls. Managing like parenting. Let's just don't go through the process. Let's learn something about it. Uh, the Stinger Principle. We're all very naive if you think you can go through a career of managing organizations in our complex environment, working with people, and without realizing that you're going to have to uh, very properly apply the stinger. Now, I'm not the kind of person that says we're going to browbeat our people, we're going to be hard-nosed, there's a punishment every time you make a mistake. No, I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is that uh, if people don't respond to coaching, if you use the principles and care and feeding of the boss, if you've agreed on what has to be done and performance isn't there or the attitude's bad, then it's not going to get any better. I see in many sections of society that we just will not confront poor performance. Now, what happens when you have poor performance? You've got quite a large number of people that are working hard for you and I saw this in one situation that I was in. If the other people that are working hard see that the slackers are getting by with what they're doing and not working hard, it really hurts their morale. Plus the fact you owe it to the person that's not doing the job to work up to their capability. The Stinger Principle says you sit down and you talk about what's to be accomplished you outline a program of what has to be done to be successful on the job. You take your responsibility as a boss to coach and help that person. But if you just can't get the job done, then you've got to apply the stinger. You've got to say, here's what has to be done, or you're going to have to find employment somewhere else. So let's get over this notion that people are on lifetime employment contracts, that any kind of performance counts. Let's apply the stinger when it's needed and when it's appropriate. The cycle theory. The cycle theory, I've noticed over a period of time that things tend to run in cycles. They're measurable. You can see them. It's important that an organization 